Every year in Hollywood, a multitude of young actors emerge with promising careers. Some make it big and etch their names in history, while others make poor choices and fade into obscurity. Some can't handle the fame and become embroiled in scandals, generating more public interest in their personal lives than their acting. One of these rising stars was Irish actor Jonathan Rhys Myers, who quickly climbed the ranks of young Hollywood talent with roles in films by Oliver Stone and Woody Allen. However, despite his initial success, his career declined. In this video, we will explore what happened to Jonathan and assess the possibility of his return to the big screen. Jonathan Rhys Myers has been acting since his teenage years. He was expelled from school at 16, but was discovered by a casting company while hanging out at a pool hall. Although he didn't land the part he initially auditioned for, he was called back for a commercial, which he got. His first film appearance came shortly after, with a small role in A Man of No Importance. From there, his career took off, with him booking at least one film per year from 1996 to 2000. In 1998, he starred alongside future superstars Christian Bale and Ewan McGregor in the musical drama film Velvet Goldmine. Written and directed by Todd Haynes, with a story by Haynes and James Lyons, the film is set in Britain during the glam rock era of the early 1970s and tells the story of a fictional bisexual pop star who faked his own death. The film was nominated for the Palme d'Or at the 1998 Cannes Film Festival and won the award for Best Artistic Contribution. After the success of Velvet Goldmine failed to bring him box office success or stardom, Reese Myers went through a tough period. In 1999, he appeared in several projects including Titus, a Shakespeare adaptation with Anthony Hopkins, Ride with the Devil, a Civil War epic with Tobey Maguire directed by Ang Lee, and The Loss of Sexual Innocence, a steamy film by Mike Figgis where he played the teenage version of Julian Sands' character. In 2000, he starred in the BBC miniseries Gorman Gast, and in 2001 he appeared in two little-known films and Prozac Nation which was never released in theaters. The year 2002 was a pivotal one for the actor. He starred alongside Kara Knightley in Bend It Like Beckham, which was the first Western film allowed to be shown in North Korea. The film received numerous award nominations and grossed $76.5 million on a budget of $6 million. This box office success brought the actor into the spotlight. In 2004, the actor appeared in two big Hollywood studio productions, but both underperformed at the box office. Vanity Fair with Reese Witherspoon and Alex Ender with Colin Farrell in the lead role. Reese Myers found it amusing that Oliver Stone hired him for Alexander, as he had previously auditioned for Stone on a project that never came to fruition. During that audition, Reese Myers had told Stone that the script was poor, and Stone's producer later called him to say that he would never appear in an Oliver Stone film. Rhys Myers was unhappy during the filming of Alexander by Oliver Stone and felt that his character was just a decorative addition in some scenes. He requested to be removed from those scenes. He did not have much control over his role in Elvis, a 2005 CBS miniseries, which was well received by audiences but criticized by most critics. Despite this, Reese Myers won his first major award for his performance in Elvis, a Golden Globe for Best Actor in a Miniseries or Television Film. From the Hollywood Foreign Press Association, Greater Triumph followed later in 2005. However, when Reese Myers took a star turn in a highly anticipated Woody Allen film, Match Point, it was Allen's first film to be set in London and its story of ambition that veers toward criminality centered on Reese Meyer's character. Both Match Point and Reese Meyer's performance earned strong critical praise stateside, with Vanity Fair hailing it as the best Woody Allen movie in ages, and in which Reese Meyer slipped effortlessly into a great part. The film was a box office success, which is uncommon for Woody Allen's movies, and with a budget of $15 million, it turned over $85 million. It seemed that after a string of successes, Reese Myers could become one of the brightest Irish actors in the world. 
while Colin Farrell's career was going through a rough patch after a series of failures, and Pierce Brosnan's star was beginning to fade. It seemed that way at first. He hit it big with his role in the blockbuster film Mission Impossible 3, alongside Tom Cruise, Hollywood's leading moneymaker. He continued his success with the critically acclaimed August Rush, where two of the songs sung by his character, Louis Connolly, This Time and Break, were nominated for Best Original Song at the 80th Academy Awards. At this time, reports of the actor's alcohol issues have started to surface. 2005 Jonathan first seeks help for alcohol addiction at a Malibu facility. November 2007 The actor is arrested at Dublin Airport for being drunk and in breach of the peace in November 2007. The charges were subsequently dropped. June 2009 Jonathan is arrested at Charles de Gaulle Airport after threatening to kill three French police officers while drunk. May 2010 The Irish actor seeks help for his addiction in May 2010, just days after allegedly screaming abuse at airport staff when they banned him from getting on a plane because he was drunk. At the time, the world was captivated by the historical series The Tudors, where Jonathan played King Henry VIII. Initially, he was only going to participate in the first season, but due to the series' high ratings and a massive following of fans, he decided to stay for four seasons. This role brought him global fame, but hindered his development in the film industry. His movies from Paris with Love and Six Souls were met with poor box office results. In the summer of 2011, a massive following of fans were shocked to hear the news about their idol. The actor attempted to take his own life by overdosing on pills. The medical professionals had a hard time giving him first aid. In a bizarre reaction to the pills, he struggled against the doctors to the point where the police had to be called for assistance. Following these incidents, the actor's career saw a gradual decline. He was either offered small roles in high-profile projects or lead roles in direct-to-video films. In an effort to revive his career, the actor sought to replicate the success of the Tudors and took on lead roles in two consecutive series. While he starred as the main character in Dracula, the show failed and was cancelled after just one season. The series Vikings was more successful, although the actor had a smaller role, appearing only in season 5 as the primary antagonist. The actor's participation in the Vikings was likely their last significant role. In recent years, he have focused more on acting for the sake of acting with films that mostly go straight to video and receive little interest from audiences or critics. Any films that make it to the big screen earn meager sums, typically in the hundreds of thousands of dollars. In recent years, the actor has devoted much of his time to his family, dealing with addiction, surviving car accidents, undergoing anger management therapy, and making movies to earn a living. Regrettably, it appears unlikely that the actor will be able to revive his career, as his fellow countryman, Colin Farrell has done.